Hey guys, it's Chris from Highland Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. Well, what I've got currently um, on the workbench is I'm well underway with building my Highline Guitars Echo. And I mentioned it in the last episode, it's going to be a double cutaway guitar. And what I've got so far is on Monday, I prepared all the blanks, which included the body blank, the neck blank, and the fretboard blank. And then on uh, Tuesday, I used my CNC machine to make the fretboard and the neck shaft and headstock. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to glue the fretboard into place and I'll probably let that dry all day. And then I probably won't get back to the neck until um, tomorrow. Um, but then for the rest of the day, what I plan to do is take this big slab of mahogany. I'm going to throw it on the CNC table and I will do all the routing, cutting, and carving for the body. And once that's done, um, next week I will start uh, sanding all those parts. Um, I'll sand them from 80 grit all the way up to 220, which is the point where I will be uh, applying the finish. And that kind of brings up a topic, um, which I think you may find interesting, and that is uh, when you're building a guitar, there's really two rules of thumb. Well, there's probably more, but uh, the two rules of thumb that I can think of offhand right now is you need to start um, by acquiring all the parts and materials before you ever cut anything out. And this is especially true if you've never built a guitar before. You want to have everything on hand. And that's so you can measure everything and make any adjustments to your design if a part doesn't quite match what you thought it was going to be. Even though manufacturers tr will try to list out the specifications for their parts, I've found that oftentimes what you get doesn't perfectly match what they claim. So as a result, I have to make adjustments to the design and that's an important thing that you have to do. Another rule of thumb is before you do anything, after you've got all your parts in and you've measured everything, but before you actually start any kind of work, you want to sit down and think through the entire process from start to finish. And you want to kind of picture it in your mind's eye and view it through a lens of everything that could go wrong and then try to plan accordingly. And what that does is it helps you to establish an order of process. And that's really important. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about when it comes to thinking all this through. When I build a guitar, I make the body, the neck, and the fretboard, each part separately, and I try to make them as fully complete as I possibly can. That means all the carving, all the routing, um, slotting, that sort of thing. Everything is done before I start to bring all the parts together. I know a lot of guys will glue the fretboard on before they slot it. But the problem is, is if you glue the fretboard on and you begin slotting and you run into a problem, let's say maybe you miscalculated the position of the frets, or let's say you position a fret slot crooked or not where it's actually supposed to be, not only have you ruined the fretboard, but you've ruined the entire neck. So I try to do everything separately before I bring it all together. And this is something I learned by thinking it through before cutting, carving, and sanding. Another good example has to do with how you're going to finish a guitar because when you apply finish, there's a lot of steps involved and how and, and what order you're going to apply those, those different steps will depend on the outcome. And a lot of times when we finish a guitar, the manner in which we're going to finish the neck may not be the same as how we're going to finish the body. And of course, how the neck is going to be attached to the body, along with those different methods that we may be using to apply the finish, will determine the correct order. And on this uh, Highline Echo that I'm going to build, my initial plan is I want the neck to have a natural finish. It has a slight flame um, 
figure to it, so I'll probably add a little bit of a, of a brown stain to help try to pop out that figure a little. But it's going to remain mostly the natural color. And then I want to put a flat matte lacquer over the top. On the body, I'm going to put down a uh, black tinted grain filler, sand that off, and then I'm going to put down a bright red transparent dye stain. Once that's done, I also want the body to have that same matte flat clear coat finish. However, the order in which all this is going to be done is dictated by um, a lot of the construction process and how I want this all to come together in the end. Uh, for example, the question that would come up is when should I put down my flat matte lacquer before or after I install the frets? Well, what I'll do on this is uh, after the neck, after the fretboard has been glued down and the, the, fret, uh, the neck and the fretboard have been sanded uh, to 220 grit, I will then put down the light brown stain, let that dry, and then I will clear coat it with the flat matte lacquer and I'll let that dry and cure. Now I'm going to probably just spray the top of the fretboard initially. And then once that's dry, I'll install the frets. So I don't have to worry about putting lacquer down after the frets are installed. The lacquer will already be there. But I won't worry about putting lacquer on the back of the neck yet. Once the uh, frets are installed, I'll then apply um, the finish, the, the grain filler and the red dye to the body, get that done. Then I'll install the neck into the body and this is going to be a set in neck so it will be glued in. And once that has uh, dried, I will then clear coat both, I'll mask off the fretboard since it's already been clear coated, and then I will spray my matte lacquer onto the back of the neck, um, the headstock, and then the entire body all at the same time. So I have to follow that order in order to uh, be assured of success and not find myself into a situation where I've kind of boxed myself in, you know, as if uh, I were to install the frets and then realize, oh shoot, I didn't put down the lacquer first. I should have done that before I installed the frets because now that's going to be a real challenge to try to put down lacquer when I've got frets already in place. So uh, those are just some examples of how you need to uh, you know, measure all your components and your wood and everything before you start building and then think through the entire process from start to finish before you fire up that bandsaw or in my case, the CNC machine. Speaking of the CNC machine, I've had a lot of inquiries from people wondering when I'm gonna have a set of plans available for this machine. And I know I had said in past episodes that I was going to offer a set of plans for the machine once it was done. In fact, I had said that I was going to give myself some time to use the machine and then maybe work out any bugs that might crop up. And during that time, I really thought through the whole idea of offering plans. And it occurred to me that that really a set of plans isn't going to benefit people because a CNC machine is really nothing more than a bunch of parts all bolted together. And I used a plan since there was no other machine like this and I had to determine the length and dimensions of all the parts that I needed to order. So a plan helped me to do that. But if you were to build this exact machine yourself, really what you need is a list of all the parts that are necessary and then an assembly manual so you know what order to assemble everything. It's kind of like building a, a guitar. Everything has to be done in a certain order in order to be assured of success. However, along the way I've run into some challenges and one of those challenges is um, the parts. You know, a lot of the parts that I'm using are coming over from China and those parts are, are available widely on um, eBay and, and Alibaba and Banggood and um, there's another one I found, I think it's called TomTom. Tom. Anyway, um, you can order parts from a wide range of different sources, but they, the one issue I ran into when building my machine is, is 
Even though a part will be specified as a, at a certain dimension, oftentimes what you get doesn't match that dimension. And as a result, you have to, to kind of scramble and make adjustments to the design in order for everything to fit together. And let's face it, a CNC machine, you've got you know these three axes and everything has to be engineered to be a dimension that's gonna allow those all those parts of that puzzle to fit together and then function properly. And I had to do a little bit of altering and adjusting um, in order to get uh, all the components to fit together and to work. Um, now, I will say that having used this machine um, on a regular basis for the past uh, five, six months, I have not had a single issue. Not one problem has come up in its use, which really, it actually surprises me because especially with the electronics. Um, I'm using uh, an Arduino Uno controller with Gerbil motion control software. And I use that because I was familiar with it and I didn't really want to invest money into like Mach 3 and, and all that other stuff. And I was somewhat worried that I was gonna have issues. I haven't had a single issue. Everything has worked flawlessly. But that you know gets me back to um, the plan or the instruction manual, and and I'm trying to decide how far I want to take it. I've drawn up uh, or I've put together an entire assembly manual that's fully illustrated for the mechanical structure, and I started to do one for the electronics, and but I'm kind of at a at a point where I'm not sure if I want to take it that far. Um, I can offer a suggestion as far as the electronics are concerned, but I gotta be uh, concerned with potential liability issues. And that extends not only to you know, safety and all that stuff, but it also extends to your likelihood of success in building one of these machines. So I think what I need to do is put together the um, assembly manual and uh, I'm, I'm trying to put together a parts list, although that's enormously involving. And what I hope to do is put a big disclaimer on all of this, saying this is intended as, an, as a guide to inspire you to build your own machine. You, you may not necessarily be able to do it exactly as I did it, because I can't guarantee that all the parts you get are going to be the same as what I got. Um, yes, there are industry standards, but you know, like I said, a lot of this stuff is coming out of China, and I just can't help but think that um, quality control is not a strong suit for a lot of these parts. In fact, when I would receive parts, I would check the address on Google Maps, and you'd be shocked at where some of this stuff is coming from. And um, there's also this issue of tariffs and trade wars, and I have no idea how that's going to affect either the price or the availability of some of the parts. But I will get everything, um, I will try to list it out as best I can, and then that way you can, you know, you're on your own when it comes to sourcing it. And as far as plans are concerned, the only part of this machine that I can really offer plans for are the end plates that I made for this. And these end plates were made from 18 millimeter plywood, which I have found to be plenty good for this machine. You know, I, you see a lot of guys using big thick plates of aluminum. You know, sure you can do that if you have a way of cutting and drilling it, but um, the plywood has worked just fine for me and I have had no trouble with it. So um, I can offer those, but you have to go into it knowing that there's a possibility you may have to modify those plans to suit whatever parts you end up purchasing. So that's just kind of the, um, the reality of fabricating your own uh, project like this using components sourced from a wide range of sources all around the world. So that's where things stand with the CNC machine. All right, well, that's all I've got for this week's episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. And as always, I hope you have a great weekend, a great week ahead. Um, be sure to hit the like button. And if you don't already subscribe, hit the subscribe button. 
And um, I hope you have a chance to do some cutting, carving, and sanding on your own in your own workshop. So until next week, take care and we'll see you soon.